Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for November 5th, 2020, around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. While well, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon into evening hours, we can see uh, tropical depression Ada still hanging around down here in Central America. And the rest of the tropics are quiet, but we will be watching Eta over the next couple of days. We have a relatively broad gyre that is, is setting up right now across portions of the eastern Pacific and over the south or the northwestern Caribbean. And as the low level circulation here of Eta actually continues to kind of fade away, a new area of showers and thunderstorm development has occurred on the northern side. And we can kind of see that here. Uh, looking at the visible satellite imagery, the low-level center of circulation is roughly expected to be somewhere uh, located right in through here. It is very broad and elongated. Of course, it made landfall here just a couple of days ago and then moved basically inland like that. Now, what's occurring here is on the northern side, again, we have a gyre. Now, if we go back out to the wider perspective, we had a, have a very big gyre here. And if we actually take the uh, true color uh, zoomed out here, and if we actually kind of speed this up just a tad bit, we can see that there's definitely a lot of turning across this very broad area. And this uh, is this gyre that is setting up right now across portions of the East Pacific and the Northwestern Caribbean. Our storm is located somewhere roughly in about this vicinity here where the low level sensor of circulation is, though it's very hard to depict that right now. Eventually, this northern cluster here seems to be focusing energy, and this will likely bundle into a con consolidated area of energy and will probably go on to be uh, Ada again, although, you know, it's relatively kind of different. You know, we'll see if it gets a new name or if this is indeed uh, Ada, but either way, we will likely be watching a storm that is down here in this vicinity uh, by Friday. So by tomorrow, we are likely to have a tropical storm uh, re-emerging over the Northwestern Caribbean and then potentially heading an impact in Cuba in the Isle of Youth. Now, with, the, with this being said, there will likely be tropical storm watches that will be issued in the next day or so, uh, as this is expected to be over Cuba by Sunday afternoon. By uh, noon Sunday, this is expected to be over Cuba. Now, there is a fairly wide margin here of possibilities because uh, at this time you can see the hurricane center is forecasting a slowdown and then an eventual turn over Cuba moving the center well away from Florida at this point you can see the five-day cone has shifted uh, to less of Florida however this really doesn't this, this only depicts where the center is going to go and as I'm going to show here the impacts are going to occur well outside of the center of circulation here. Now, we can see a couple of things that are going to happen here. This is the GFS 500 millibar flow, the geopotential height, and the cyclonic vorticity at 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And we'll move this forward to 7 o'clock this, this evening. We can see that there's a couple of things occurring. We talked about how yesterday there's going to be this trough of low pressure that's going to start to develop, cut off, and drift towards the south and east here. And this is starting to become more apparent today. We have a relatively uh, decent confidence uh, that this is going to happen. Now you can see this larger gyre that's still set up across the East Pacific and the Northwestern uh, Caribbean. And this is creating a large amount of disturbed weather. Now if we go even forward with time, we can see that eventually by tomorrow, uh, this is 36 hours from now, we have this uh, cutoff flow that has now formed over Texas and uh, western Louisiana. Now this is creating an influence with a relatively small influence layer right here, but this is weakened down this ridge of high pressure that is to the north right here that's going to be sliding uh, eastward with time. So we have a, a high pressure area sliding eastward. This uh, area here is going to be drifting and meandering towards the south and east. At the very same time, we have fairly high confidence here that we do have a tropical storm, but you notice that it's not very well bundled in the 500 millibar layer. Now, if we jump back down here to the lower levels in the A50 vorticity, we can see a different story, but this is still rather loosely consolidated here. And this makes me really wonder if this will have some hybrids of a subtropical and tropical storms. So this may be subtropical at some point, but we expect this will probably be fully tropical. 
uh, eventually we can see here that eventually what starts to happen is this is going to start to get kind of swung around. We have, again, this upper level low uh, that has now kind of merged with uh, ETA right here. It's become very uh, broad and spread out. And this begins to try to rotate the storm towards the northwest here. It's going to swing it out towards the north and east and swing it back towards the north and west. Now, where this turn occurs is going to remain the biggest question mark here. And we can see that on the GFS forecast, this turn is much more towards the east uh, before turning towards the northwest before, uh, you know, other models such as the, uh, you know, ECMWF, the Euro, which takes it over here and bends it back much like that and then kind of does something like that. Now, this remains a possibility towards a, a storm that is not indeed making a turn over Florida, but indeed making a turn over Cuba and does something much like that. Now, this is where the center is going to be. But if we put on the moisture field at this time, uh, this is by uh, late Saturday evening, or I'm sorry, late Sunday evening, rather. We can see that the storm is sitting here off the Louisiana or off the Cuba and uh, Florida Straits area right now and sitting towards the south and east of Miami. Now we can see that our main steering flows right now. We got a big ridge of high pressure towards the north. And this upper level low that is kind of curled in, forcing some of the dry air on the back side of this. Now, what you can see here, though, in the moisture field in green, all of this moisture is getting pumped in and rotating around. So if we move this forward, we can see that this starts to move around by uh, 1 p.m. on Monday. We can start to see that this starts to really uh, wrap around and all of this moisture is now getting pumped into Florida here, especially from the I-4 corridor in south and eastward. We get a fairly heavy concentrated band of rotating, uh, you know, lines and, and kind of these feeder bands that are rotating in with the flow. Now, again, and then we go, you know, five days from now, this is, you know, day five, we still get a storm here towards Cuba. So even if this manages to come across and then dip towards the south and west here, we get a very big tongue of moisture that's going to be brought up uh, from this deep tropical moisture that comes all the way from the Caribbean and the Atlantic. And then that's going to be fetched in over a several day period into portions of South Florida and even the Central Florida Peninsula. This remains very big because this could cause adverse conditions, flash flooding, you know, upwards of, you know, over 10 inches of rain could occur with a storm track, especially one that takes it more so over south in central Florida before kind of curving it out rather than a storm that remains south of Florida at this time. Either way, big tropical moisture is going to be coming. Now, if we look here at the uh, Euro forecast, this is the 12Z uh, run here at the 850 millibar vorticity. Again, we can see generalized right now as of 7 o'clock this morning here on the Euro Again, this very broad area of turning, it's not very well organized. Again, part of this is the low-level circulation of ETA, and part of this is the larger kind of uh, southwest to northeast-oriented uh, gyre here. And then we can see eventually here uh, by Sunday, the euro is a little bit slower here on Sunday. So it's a little bit slower, whereas here the GFS had a storm that was much over the Florida Keys at this time, uh, the Euro has a storm just south here of Cuba and near the Isle of Youth. This big ridge of high pressure is building, which is going to force a storm to eventually turn as the steering flow here is generally going to be one out of the westerly direction here. So we're going to be getting a storm out of the west here, moving out uh, basically of the west. And most of the models agree that there will be a, a ridge building in uh, after that time. Now the Euro... Uh, kind of develops a storm much rather in the central Gulf of Mexico rather than bringing a storm uh, much closer to Florida. It kind of brings it very close to Florida and then turns it. And that's because now this ridge is starting to side eastward with time, but it's also expanding in influence here. This big ridge of high pressure starts to expand eastward and with that, it, or westward rather, it kind of expands in all directions. And with that, now the generalized steering flow is going to be kind of out of the, the, you know, west and maybe even southwest for a little bit. And then eventually kind of curve it up and around as the trough tries to, or as the ridge retreats back towards the uh, east here. 
Now, again, this is a rather uncertain, uh, you know, feature here regarding the eventual evolution of this because this may not necessarily occur as planned. Now, if we also take a look here at the h -wharf, this is the uh, forecast here for uh, the, the 12Z run here. And again, uh, we'll move this forward on the h -wharf. Again, you can see here it tries to develop a storm approaching uh, really the Cuban coastline here. This is 991 millibars, so it is getting down there. But again, you can see this dry air, this the kind of uh, lighter shade of green and lighter shade of brown starting to get rotated around uh, into this uh, center of circulation here. And what this could cause is a, you know, entrainment of dry air in the circulation to largely collapse of any deep moisture. You can see all this moisture content is well towards the north of the storm. And if we even continue this past, uh, you know, Cuba, we only finally start to get a storm that is trying to consolidate better over uh, the Florida Straits in southeast of Miami and near uh, Andrews Island. Now, again, this is a rather broad moisture field, and, and you can see that there's still not an equal amount of moisture on the southern side as compared to the northern side, which is bringing a copious amount of rainfall to even as far east as the Grand Bahama Island and uh, Marsh Harbor area is obviously devastated by Dorian last year. So rainfall could be a very big concern, uh, even if this does turn well towards the south. And to kind of corroborate that story, if we look here on the GFS, once again, that deep tropical moisture is just going to be pumped in over several days here. Now, uh, eventually the H wharf does cross southeast Florida here, kind of makes landfall in southeast Florida and retains it as a weak tropical storm. Although the pressure is down in the 980s. The wind pattern here is not one of hurricane force for the most part. But you can definitely see a large swath of moisture is going to be dealt with across uh, most of the Florida pan or um, most of the Florida Peninsula and especially southeast Florida uh, over the next couple of days. Now if we take a look at what the storm has to work with here. We'll go to the upper level wind environment here. This is the uh, 200 millibar wind uh, pattern in the atmosphere and we'll go to 24 hours from now by seven o'clock or really six o'clock tomorrow morning rather uh, we can see that there's a couple of things that's going to be occurring here again we can already tell a big trough is digging in right now on the, the gfs forecast we have this big jet uh, kind of max located over the florida peninsula digging all the way down now, this has created, once again, somewhat of an anticyclonic flows. We also have a gyre setting up right now over Central America, the East Pacific, and the Northwestern Caribbean. Now, if we move forward with time here, we can see that what happens here on the GFS is that we start to get this very big uh, trough that digs in, this very big wind shear kind of maximum with over, you know, 20 to 30 knots of vertical wind shear. Now, in the face of all of that, the storm kind of has left no contest to really strengthen. Now, after this time, however, though, we seem to get a relaxation as this kind of trough digs in. We do get an upper level um, anticyclone to kind of develop in a little bit of the outflows created by this jet maximum located and able to kind of really pull this uh, towards the north. And that kind of creates a favorable, semi-favorable environment after that time where the storm is uh, able to strengthen a tad bit. And you can kind of see that that you know, remains in its favorable column for several days until an approaching uh, wind shear kind of column here and an another trough is digging in. And this is, you know, well after five days at this point. So it's not necessarily a high likelihood, but we can very clearly see that the pattern is going to be semi-conducive for additional strengthening. Now, if you take a look at this here, this is the upper ocean heat content map valid as of yesterday. And again, just for reference here, anything really in the greens and upward uh, to these whites is fairly formidable upper ocean heat content, especially the red and white colors here. And we can very clearly see that one thing that we do have to kind of keep an eye on is where the storm is going to go. Because as you can see here, it is very likely that this will pass over a large swath of very high upper ocean heat content, especially near Cuba and the Isle of Youth region. And then after crossing Cuba, Florida in, in the general vicinity of Florida still has some very high upper ocean heat content. So assuming uh, a track that kind of comes something like that, like the current hurricane center forecast has it, 
there be fairly formidable upper ocean heat content all the way until you get about here in the kind of the, the central Gulf of Mexico. Then after that time, these upper ocean heat content and sea surface temperatures start to go down because we've had cold fronts and multiple hurricanes in this region over the last, you know, several months. And obviously now the cold fronts that have been digging in. So the bottom line is if you live in Cuba, obviously in the Isle of Youth, you need to be monitoring the progress of this as tropical storm watches will likely go up sometime tomorrow. After that point in Florida, everywhere from the Florida Peninsula, really from the I-4 corridor southward to the Florida Keys, is going to deal with this in some way, shape, or form. Even if it is not a direct impact, this will be a large enough storm system with some extra tropical or excuse me, some subtropical characteristics more than likely uh, to prevent rapid intensification, but that will spread out the moisture field and will bring copious amounts of rainfall to portions of Southeast Florida, especially Miami-Dade County, etc. will have to deal with some flooding concerns as we progress forward with time. And then especially here, if models like the h Wharf and h Mon start to play out where this, you know, more nonetheless comes straight up the Florida Peninsula, we might have to deal with more of a threat, uh, you know, then for, you know, higher chances of wind, etc. But right now, your main concern is going to be gusty winds, obviously, squally conditions, flooding rainfall, not really worried about the storm surge problem, although, you know, an increase in swells and wave action will occur offshore, especially... And, you know, also the threat for isolated tornadoes, as you would be classified in that right front quadrant rotating around. So you could have some tornado problems as well down there in southeast Florida. All right. Well, that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I will talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.